In this video, I want to show you an example of how to calculate the NPV of a project. So just a quick review, the net present value, or NPV, is the sum of a project's discounted cash flows. Both the cash inflows and cash outflows, you discount them to the present value, and then net them together. So let's say we have a project and it has the following cash flows. So in year zero, which is today, right now, we have a cash outflow of $500. Okay, so we have an outflow. And then for the next three periods, we have cash inflows of different amounts. Okay, so we have a cash inflow of $325 one year from today, two years from today, a cash inflow of $150, and then three years from today, a final cash inflow of $100. So what we're going to do is we're going to discount these to the present value. We need to know the discount rate that the company's going to use for this project. So let's just say that it's 8%. So if that's the case, then we would take negative 500 is negative because it's a cash outflow, and it's 500 because we don't have to discount. And when we pay out cash today, we don't have to discount into the present value because $500 paid today is $500 paid today. There is no time value of money for it because it occurs today. But the $325, we need to discount one year because it doesn't occur until one period from now. So $325 divided by 1.08. How did I get 1.08? This is the formula for the present value of a single cash flow. Okay, you would just take the cash flow divided by one plus r to the nth power. Okay, and n is the number of periods. There's one period here, that's why I didn't put the exponent, but it's 325 divided by 1.08. The second cash flow, 150, is divided by 1.08 to the second power because it occurs two periods into the future. And then the third cash flow, that $100, is $100 divided by 1.08 to the third power, okay? So here is how you set it up. And then this here, we don't know it yet, but that's going to be our NPV. That's going to be our net present value. And it could be positive, it could be negative, it could be zero. So what do we have here? We've got uh, this, if you divide uh, the 325 by 1.08, you get 301. The $150 by 1.08 squared is 129. I, I've done some rounding here, and then $100 divided by 1.08 uh, cubed is $79. You add these cash flows up, it gives you positive $9. What does that mean? That means that the NPV, the net present value of this project, is $9. So based on this discount rate, this project adds wealth to the firm, and so because the MPV is positive, we should accept this project. Okay, that's the decision rule. If the MPV is positive, we should accept. Now, what if the discount rate, so I told you it was 8%, but what if it had been higher? Let's just say hypothetically that it was instead 11%, that nothing changed about these cash flows, but let's just instead of 8%, let's consider 11% and see how things would change. Okay. So when we do 11%, we see that we have, and so I've got the discounted cash flows of each here. So when we do that and we sum up the discounted cash flows, we get an NPV of negative $12. Okay, and I, I reproduce here, here's with 8%, which we already did. We have the NPV of $9. But it goes from $9 to negative 12 when we go from a discount rate of 8% up to 11%. So if you increase the discount rate, if you increase R, you're going to reduce the discounted, the, 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 the sum of the discounted cash flows. Okay, so let's take, for example, after one year, the $325 cash flow, under 8%, it was worth $301. So $325 received one year from now at a discount rate of 8% to 8% is worth $301 today. But if the discount rate is 11%, it's only worth $293. The higher the discount rate, the less that these future cash inflows are going to be worth in terms of the present day dollars. 